The transmission from Three Eye Atlas began as nothing more than a whisper, a faint, almost imperceptible anomaly lurking in the background of the cosmic static. At first, it was no louder than the sigh of the universe itself, an irregular pulse threading through endless noise. Yet there was something deliberate about it. Not loud, not chaotic, deliberate. That was what made it impossible to ignore. Researchers had long been accustomed to sifting through meaningless signals, stray bursts of radiation, and random fluctuations of interstellar plasma. But this one was different. Its rhythm carried intent, like a coded heartbeat. When the data was painstakingly cleaned, aligned, and run through verification after verification, its true nature emerged. This was no random phenomenon. It was structured, patterned, directed. Even before the public knew, whispers had already begun in observatories and classified rooms. The very existence of the transmission confirmed suspicions that had been muttered behind closed doors for decades. Something beyond the solar system was not just out there, but watching. Before we go any deeper, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next update about this extraordinary mystery. What you're about to hear is not speculation. It is data. It is a revelation. The name Three Eye Atlas came from its initial designation, simply the third identified interstellar object catalogued by the Atlas survey. But unlike its predecessors, it did not slip by silently. From the start, its trajectory had unsettled astronomers. It drifted, but not randomly. It moved as if guided. Its path refused to obey the simple laws of celestial chance, and now, with the transmission, unease turned to dread. The signal was aimed with surgical precision, tightly beamed, almost surgically cut to slice across the void. It wasn't a natural radio emission. It was a constructed broadcast. Every frequency band revealed harmonics aligned so perfectly that only intelligence could be behind them. What unsettled the scientific community most was not just that it had spoken, but that it had spoken directly into the listening range we use most for deep space observation, as if it knew exactly where we would be paying attention. The technical breakdown of the message offered no comforting ambiguity. Patterns emerged, repeating in mathematical sequences, prime numbers announcing themselves like cosmic fingerprints. Complex wave modulations followed, hinting at layered encoding, something far more sophisticated than a greeting. The initial excitement of deciphering what seemed like an extraterrestrial signature soured quickly. Deeper spectral analysis uncovered a far darker reality. Embedded within the carrier waves were not pleasantries, but instructions, commands, code designed to interact with systems on Earth. This was not an accidental overlap of communication styles. This was a targeted reach, a probing test to see what could be triggered. Fears hardened into certainty. For decades, debates had raged about whether first contact would be benign, hostile, or indifferent. The Three-Eye Atlas transmission forced the question into sharp relief. Its content implied surveillance, knowledge of our frequencies and understanding of our computational structures. The fact that the message was intelligible at all without impossible leaps of interpretation suggested whoever sent it had been monitoring us for a very long time. There was no comfort in imagining a benevolent observer, the precision of the signal carried the cold efficiency of reconnaissance, not the warmth of curiosity. We were not simply being noticed. We were being assessed. The implications rippled through the scientific and political communities alike. If a transmission could be designed to resonate within Earth's technological infrastructure, then the line between astronomical observation and cyber intrusion had been obliterated. Security agencies saw the parallel immediately. This was the extraterrestrial equivalent of a probing scan on a network, the kind of reconnaissance a hacker performs before launching a direct intrusion. By embedding structured code into a signal detectable by our instruments, the senders had demonstrated both their reach and their intent. They weren't merely announcing themselves. They were testing how deeply they could sink into our systems without resistance. The timing of the transmission was one of its most haunting aspects. The object had already raised suspicions with its erratic trajectory, its acceleration shifts hinting at non-gravitational propulsion, a possibility dismissed in public but whispered privately. And when the transmission arrived, it coincided perfectly with its perihelion point, the moment of its closest approach to the Sun. 
as if the sender had waited for the optimal position to broadcast toward Earth with maximum clarity. The synchronization was too precise to dismiss as chance. This was planning, strategy, patience. Astronomers who first detected the signal felt the weight of revelation crushing them. For years, the universe had been an expansive wonder to them, full of mysteries waiting to be explored with cautious optimism. Now that optimism was gone. The cosmos was no longer a silent stage, but a theater filled with active players, players who might not wish us well. For decades, scientists had feared that confirmation of intelligence would not bring mutual exchange, but a reminder of our vulnerability. The Three Eye Atlas transmission made that fear tangible, undeniable, immediate. Every detail reinforced the impression of deliberate contact. The modulation avoided natural distortions. Its encoding contained redundancy, guaranteeing comprehension no matter how primitive or advanced the receiver. And most disturbing of all, its amplitude fluctuated in synchronization with Earth's own planetary resonance, as if mocking the idea of coincidence. It was a demonstration of awareness, of calibration to our very existence. That precision stripped away any hope of a benign misunderstanding. Humanity had long grappled with the paradox of silence. If the universe teems with life, why haven't we heard from it? The answer, it seemed, was not that the universe was silent, but that it had been waiting, waiting until the right moment, or until we had developed enough for our signals to attract attention. The eerie question now was whether Three Pi Atlas was the first of many, or simply the first we had noticed. How many transmissions had slipped past us, disguised as static, while we tuned our instruments to narrower bands? The knowledge that at least one message had been caught meant countless others might have gone undetected. As governments and institutions poured over the data, the question of public disclosure loomed. The details were too unsettling to share without risking panic. Yet concealment risked an equally destabilizing backlash if the truth leaked. To admit openly that a signal had been received from an interstellar object, one containing what appeared to be encoded directives, would shatter the fragile illusion of security modern society depends on. Yet to deny it would mean operating under a veil of secrecy that could not last. The weight of responsibility was immense. The nature of the instructions embedded within the transmission remained its most alarming feature. Analysts argued the code resembled an initiation handshake, a protocol negotiation common in digital communications. In human terms, it was as though an unknown entity had knocked on the door of our networks and left behind a cryptographic key. Whether that key could be used to open deeper channels of communication or to exploit vulnerabilities was a matter of fierce debate. It meant that extraterrestrial intelligence was not content to observe from afar. It was reaching directly into the digital heart of human civilization. The energy required to beam such a transmission across interstellar distances disturbed experts as much as its content. Natural emissions could be dismissed as byproducts of cosmic phenomena. But focused signals demanded technology and intent. Whoever engineered the broadcast wielded power far beyond anything humanity had achieved. To sustain coherence across such a distance required mastery of energy on a scale we could scarcely imagine. It was a sobering reminder. In the cosmic hierarchy, we were the junior species fumbling with primitive tools while giants reached across light years with precision.